Welcome to White Waltham Airfield near London. This is said to be the largest grass aerodrome in the UK. The expansive field and historic buildings make for a timeless flying experience, as you'll soon discover. And the Piper Cub is the quintessential general aviation aircraft. I always tell my students, flying a Cub is real flying. Pilots have been learning to fly in Cubs at White Waltham since before the Second World War. And that's what we'll be going up in today. This fantastic Cub has been prepared and fueled for our flight. Why don't you hop in? Let's get the engine started. First, I'll turn on the battery. Now, there are only two bits of information you'll need from the instruments during this lesson. Airspeed, or how fast we're going, and altitude, how high we are. Airspeed is displayed on the top left gauge. That's the most important instrument you'll use today, so get familiar with it. In this cub, the airspeed is shown in miles per hour. Altitude is displayed on the instrument just below the airspeed. It's reading near zero since we're sitting on the ground. All right, let's start the engine and go flying. Here we go. Clear prop. Can you hear me OK? We can communicate over the intercom as long as you have your headphones on. That's better. I've got mine turned up as you're a little quiet. First, let's check the controls and I'll explain their effects. Push the stick left then right. Good. This will roll the aircraft in the direction you turn. It's simple stuff and will all make sense once you try it out in flight. Next, gently push the stick forward and then gently pull it back. This will pitch the nose of the aircraft down and up. When you want to climb, Raise the nose towards the sky by pulling the stick back. When you want to... Descend, lower the nose by pushing the stick forward. And finally the rudder pedals. Pressing these moves the rudder to twist or yaw the aircraft left and right. It's the hardest control to understand, but you'll figure it out. To begin with, you'll probably only use the rudder pedals when we're on the ground. Pushing the rudder pedals will also move the tailwheel, and that's how you steer on the ground. The left rudder will turn us left, right rudder will turn us to the right. Since there's no control tower here at White Waltham, we just broadcast our intentions over the traffic frequency. That way any other aircraft nearby will hear us, know where we are and where we're going. White Waltham Radio, Piper Golf Delta Lima, taxiing from Waltham Flying Club to runway 07. OK, we're looking good. I'll taxi us up to the runway. We'll perform a normal takeoff and climb to 1,000 feet. I know this is all new to you, so I'll talk you through it. Now let's test the engine by performing a run-up. We always do this to reveal any problems before we leave the ground. I'll hold the brakes to stop us from moving. Gently move the throttle control all the way forward. Good. Now pull the throttle control back out. Good stuff. Now we can taxi onto the runway and line up for takeoff. White Waltham Radio, Piper Golf Delta Lima, lining up runway 07. When you're ready, add a little power to start rolling. Turn right onto the runway and line up so the nose is pointed straight down the white dashed centre line.
use a little right rudder to tuck the nose into the right. Use the rudder to keep the nose pointed straight down the runway and get ready. OK, full power. The tail will rise very quickly by itself. Start pulling back on the stick at 40 miles per hour. Fantastic, we're flying. Let the aircraft accelerate to 75 miles per hour. Keep full power for the climb, so control the airspeed by pitching up or down. You're a bit slow, gently pitch down to increase airspeed to 75. miles per hour with pitch and keep climbing. Seventy-five miles per hour is the Cub's best rate of climb speed. That means we'll get to altitude as fast as possible flying at seventy-five. Gently push the stick to pitch the nose down and stop the climb. Fly level at one thousand feet. Great. Our takeoff and transition to cruise is complete. Well done. In this lesson, you'll learn how to fly straight and level, which sounds easy enough. The secret is configuring the aircraft to fly hands-off at different speeds. I'll teach you how to do that, and by the time we're done, you'll be superb. At least that's the plan. OK, you have control. Go ahead and push the throttle all the way forward so we speed up. Good. See how the nose wants to rise as the aircraft gains speed. Push forward on the stick to keep the nose down so you maintain 1,000 feet. Here's the secret. You can use trim to relieve that forward stick pressure. Slowly trim the nose down so you can maintain 1,000 feet without having to push the stick. The trim control sets the elevator position of the aircraft to maintain the desired pitch for a particular speed. It takes some tweaking to get the trip just right. Let the airspeed stabilise before you make your final adjustments. Keep trimming until the nose remains stationary relative to the horizon, without any stick pressure. Make progressively smaller adjustments until you've relieved all the pressure. OK, push the throttle control all the way forward. You need to reach a constant speed to trim. Apply full power. Keep...
In this lesson, you'll learn how to fly straight and level, which sounds easy enough. The secret is configuring the aircraft to fly hands-off at different speeds. I'll teach you how to do that, and by the time we're done, you'll be superb. At least that's the plan. Okay, you have control. Go ahead and push the throttle all the way forward so we speed up. Good. See how the nose wants to rise as the aircraft gains speed. Push forward on the stick to keep the nose down so you maintain 1,000 feet. Here's the secret. You can use trim to relieve that forward stick pressure. Slowly trim the nose down so you can maintain 1,000 feet without having to push the stick. The trim control sets the elevator position of the aircraft to maintain the desired pitch for a particular speed. Good. The aircraft practically flies itself when configured properly. With the aircraft properly trimmed, you can fly at any airspeed completely hands-off. Remember, you trim for specific airspeeds. If you slow down or speed up, you'll need to re-trim. Try slowing down now. Pull the throttle control back to maintain 2100 RPM. Go ahead and set power to maintain 2100 RPM. Go ahead and set power to maintain 2100 RPM. Good. See how the nose wants to drop as the aircraft slows down. Use the stick to hold the nose up, then trim to relieve the pressure. Keep adjusting the trim until the aircraft flies level at 1000 feet and 90 miles per hour. Set the throttle to maintain 2100 RPM. You need to reach a constant speed to trim. Set the power to 2100 RPM. Set the throttle to maintain 2100 RPM so the airspeed can stabilize. Great job! So now you know the secret to flying straight and level. Use trim to help maintain your desired altitude at any airspeed. Professional pilots always trim, because a trimmed aircraft is much easier to fly. Then we can just relax, and we're not fighting the aircraft.
Okay, now that you know the fundamentals of flying straight and level, how about learning how to climb and descend? Your goal in this lesson is to climb and descend at a constant airspeed. In the takeoff lesson, you learn to pitch for 75 miles per hour, which is the aircraft's best rate of climb speed. Okay, you have control. Go ahead and add full power. Good. Let's pretend we just took off. Adjust the pitch to maintain 75 miles per hour as you climb. That's right, and don't forget to use trip to help you hold 75 miles per hour. Bang on speed, good work. Keep climbing to 3,000 feet. Good, now pitch down to hold this altitude. Stay at full throttle until the airspeed reaches 90 miles per hour, then reduce power to 2100 RPM to hold that speed. Okay, now I want to see you fly straight and level at 90 miles per hour and 3000 feet. And we're slow. Increase power and hold your altitude to accelerate back to 90 miles per hour. When you pitch to hold your desired airspeed, you can adjust your altitude by just adding or reducing power. If you pitch up or down without adjusting power, you can exchange speed for altitude or altitude for speed. By adjusting power, you can change one without changing the other. Good, you haven't forgotten how to fly straight and level. Now, down we go. Descend to 2,000 feet. To begin the descent, reduce the power to idle. Adjust pitch to maintain 75 miles per hour in the descent until we reach 2,000 feet. Remember, use trim to help you hold 75 miles per hour. Good. Hold 75 miles per hour all the way down to 2,000 feet. We're approaching 2,000 feet. Be ready to increase pitch and power so that we level out right on altitude. Here's 2,000. Pitch up to maintain this altitude and adjust the power to fly at 90 miles per hour. Be sure to trim the aircraft to maintain 90 miles per hour. Well done, you're a natural. Of course, I'm a pretty good instructor too. Just remember, use pitch for airspeed and power for altitude and you'll be fine. you're catching on quickly. Of course, in order to actually fly somewhere, you need to know the next fundamental maneuver, turning.
Your goal in this lesson is to turn to the headings I specify while maintaining 90 miles per hour and 2,000 feet. You can see your heading by looking at the top of the heading indicator in the center right of the bottom row of the instrument panel. To turn, you'll move the stick left or right to bang the wings in the direction you want to go. Be sure to keep an eye on your altitude. The steeper you bank, the more the nose will want to drop. Ready to give it a go? Okay, you have control. Move the stick left to start banking left. That's enough bank. Keep turning until you reach a heading of 270 degrees or west. to roll out at exactly 270. Stop the turn by moving the stick in the opposite direction to roll the wings level. There, that wasn't difficult was it? Let's try another one. Turn right and head east. That's 90 degrees or 090. Maintain 90 miles per hour throughout this manoeuvre. You're a little low. Climb back up to 2,000 feet. Excellent, you're getting the hang of this. Let's try something slightly more precise. Turn right to a heading of 175 degrees. And here's 175 degrees. You're a quick learner. Now you know how to turn. Just bank in the direction you want to go and hold the nose up to maintain your altitude.
White Waltham Radio, Cub Golf Delta Lima, downwind for runway 25, full stop. OK, you have control. Hold 1,000 feet, 70 miles per hour, and a heading of 090 degrees. Ready to return to Earth? Believe it or not, you've already learned everything you need to know to land. You just need to put it all together. I'll walk you through it. We'll land on that runway, just off the left wing. You're a little fast, slow to 70 miles per hour. First we'll start descending, then we'll make a left turn all the way round to line up with the runway. The secret to making a good landing is a stable approach. Remember, set the throttle control and leave it alone. Use pitch to control airspeed. All right, it's time to start descending to the runway. Reduce power to 1400 RPM and lower the nose a bit. Then lower one notch of flaps. For now, leave the power at 1400 RPM and trim for 55 miles per hour. Now turn left to 340 degrees. Be sure to maintain 55 miles per hour. Now start watching the runway. Our next turn will be to line up for landing. That's right. You can tell you're lined up properly when the runway appears straight up and down compared to the horizon. Go ahead and turn towards the runway. Runway heading is 250 degrees. and lower the flaps to 20 degrees. Now adjust pitch and power to maintain 50 miles per hour to the runway. Right on speed and glide slope. Very nice. From here, watch the numbers on the runway. Fly right at them. Maintain 50 and keep those numbers motionless on the windscreen. We're too low. I White Watson Radio, Cub Golf Delta Lima, downwind for runway 25, full stop. OK, you have control. Hold 1,000 feet, 70 miles per hour, and a heading of 090 degrees. Ready to return to Earth? Believe it or not, you've already learned everything you need to know to land. You just need to put it all together. I'll walk you through it. We'll land on that runway, just off the left wing. You're a little fast, slow to 70 miles per hour. First we'll start descending, then we'll make a left turn all the way round to line up with the runway. The secret to making a good landing is a stable approach. Remember, set the throttle control and leave it alone. Use pitch to control airspeed. speed. 
All right, it's time to start descending to the runway. Reduce power to 1400 RPM and lower the nose a bit. Then lower one notch of flaps. For now, leave the power at 1400 RPM and trim for 55 miles per hour. Now turn left to 340 degrees. Be sure to maintain 55 miles per hour. And now start watching the runway. Our next turn will be to line up for landing. That's right. You can tell you're lined up properly when the runway appears straight up and down compared to the horizon. Go ahead and turn towards the runway. Runway heading is 250 degrees. Go ahead and lower the flaps to 20 degrees. Now adjust pitch and power to maintain 50 miles per hour to the runway. Right on speed and glide slope. Very nice. From here, watch the numbers on the runway. Fly right at them. Maintain 50 and keep those numbers motionless on the windscreen. to idle. Slowly raise the nose until we settle onto the runway. Use rudder to stay on the runway center line. Good. Turn off the runway to the left and come to a stop. Good, stop here. Superb, congratulations on your first landing. That was a really good approach. Nice touchdown. Welcome to Ernest A. Love Field in Prescott, Arizona, home to the Eagle Pilot School. Our location here offers fantastic flying weather, several runways, and a control tower, all surrounded by the wild beauty of the American Southwest. 
This is one of our Piper PA-28 Cherokees. It's an incredibly popular general aviation aircraft that's often used for training. The instrument panel is a bit dated compared to some modern glass cockpits, but personally, I like the steam gauges. Ready? Let's get going. Let's start with a simple trip around the airport traffic pattern. I'll explain more while we taxi to the runway. Prescott Ground, Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel at Eagle, ready to taxi, remaining in pattern. Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel, Prescott Ground, altimeter 29906. Runway 3 right at Foxtrot, intersection departure. Taxi via Foxtrot. 3 right at Foxtrot, via Foxtrot. Cherokee 9er Sierra Hotel. Okay, it's your airplane. Taxi us along taxiway Foxtrot to the intersection with runway 3 right. Taxiway Foxtrot is straight ahead of us. Follow the yellow lines, then turn right. The traffic pattern is a rectangular pattern around a runway that allows aircraft to take off and land in an orderly manner. The pattern is especially important at airports without control towers. Flying the pattern also makes it easy to configure the airplane in the same way every time and make a stable approach to land. Go straight across here.
stop here. Prescott Tower, Cherokee 109 or Sierra Hotel is ready to go. Holding short runway three right at Foxtrot, remaining in the pattern. Cherokee 109 or Sierra Hotel, Prescott Tower. Right close traffic approved. Runway three right at Foxtrot, intersection departure cleared for takeoff. Right close traffic approved, cleared for takeoff three right, Niner Sierra Hotel. Taxi to the right, out onto the runway. Having second thoughts? Take off whenever you're ready. Okay, line up and give it full power. Cherokee rotates at 55 knots. to climb at 75 knots, which is the best climb speed in the Cherokee. There's a slight crosswind from the left today. You'll need to turn left a few degrees to correct for wind drift and maintain the runway center line. Climb straight out to 5,000. Outside the pattern here. I have the air. Welcome to Ernest A. Love. 
field in Prescott, Arizona, home to the Eagle Pilot School. Our location here offers fantastic flying weather, several runways, and a control tower, all surrounded by the wild beauty of the American Southwest. This is one of our Piper PA-28 Cherokees. It's an incredibly popular general aviation aircraft that's often used for training. The instrument panel is a bit dated compared to some modern glass cockpits, but personally, I like the steam gauges. Ready? Let's get going. Let's start with a simple trip around the airport traffic pattern. I'll explain more while we taxi to the runway. Prescott Ground, Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel at Eagle, ready to taxi, remaining in pattern. Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel, Prescott Ground, altimeter 29996. Runway 3 right at Foxtrot, intersection departure. Taxi via Foxtrot. 3 right at Foxtrot, via Foxtrot. Cherokee 9er Sierra Hotel. Okay, it's your airplane. Taxi us along taxiway Foxtrot to the intersection with runway 3 right. Taxiway Foxtrot is straight ahead of us. Follow the yellow lines, then turn right. The traffic pattern is a rectangular pattern around a runway that allows aircraft to take off and land in an orderly manner. The pattern is especially important at airports without control towers. Flying the pattern also makes it easy to configure the airplane in the same way every time and make a stable approach to land. Go straight across here. Stop here. Prescott Tower, Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel is ready to go. Holding short runway 3 right at Foxtrot, remaining in the pattern. Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel, Prescott Tower. Right close traffic approved. Runway 3 right at Foxtrot, intersection departure, cleared for takeoff. Right close traffic approved, cleared for takeoff 3 right, 9er Sierra Hotel. Taxi to the right, out onto the runway. Okay, line up and give it full power. The Cherokee rotates at 55 knots. Great. Now pitch to climb at 75 knots, which is the best climb speed in the Cherokee. There's a slight crosswind from the left today. You'll need to turn left a few degrees to correct for wind drift and maintain the runway center line. Climb straight out to 5,700 feet. That's 300 feet below the pattern altitude of 6,000 feet. Okay, here comes 5,700 feet. Now make a turn 90 degrees right to a heading of 120 degrees. to 6,000 feet.
Okay, here's 6,000 feet. Level off and hold 90 knots. Once you reach pattern altitude, pause for just a moment, then turn downwind. Go ahead and turn right 90 degrees now. Fly heading 210. We're outside the pattern here. I have the airplane. Let's try that again. Welcome to Ernest A. Love Field in Prescott, Arizona, home to the Eagle Pilot School. Our location here offers fantastic flying weather, several runways, and a control tower, all surrounded by the wild beauty of the American Southwest. This is one of our Piper PA-28 Cherokees. It's an incredibly popular general aviation aircraft that's often used for training. The instrument panel is a bit dated compared to some modern glass cockpits, but personally, I like the steam gauges. Ready? Let's get going. Let's start with a simple trip around the airport traffic pattern. I'll explain more while we taxi to the runway. Prescott Ground, Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel at Eagle, ready to taxi, remaining in pattern. Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel, Prescott Ground, altimeter 29996. Runway 3 right at Foxtrot, intersection departure. Taxi via Foxtrot. 3 right at Foxtrot, via Foxtrot. Cherokee 9er Sierra Hotel. Okay, it's your airplane. Taxi us along taxiway Foxtrot to the intersection with runway 3 right. Taxiway Foxtrot is straight ahead of us. Follow the yellow lines, then turn right. The traffic pattern is a rectangular pattern around a runway that allows aircraft to take off and land in an orderly manner. The pattern is especially important at airports without control towers. Flying the pattern also makes it easy to configure the airplane in the same way every time and make a stable approach to land. straight across here. Stop here. Prescott Tower, Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel is ready to go, holding short runway 3 right at Foxtrot, remaining in the pattern. Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel, Prescott Tower. Right close traffic approved. Runway 3 right at Foxtrot, intersection departure, cleared for takeoff. Right close traffic approved, cleared for takeoff 3 right, 9er Sierra Hotel. Taxi to the right, out onto the runway. Having second thoughts? Take off whenever you're ready. Okay, line up and give it full power. Cherokee rotates at 55 knots. Great. 
Now pitch to climb at 75 knots, which is the best climb speed in the Cherokee. There's a slight crosswind from the left today. You'll need to turn left a few degrees to correct for wind drift and maintain the runway center line. Climb straight out to 5,700 feet. That's 300 feet below the pattern altitude of 6,000 feet. Okay, here comes 5,700 feet. Now make a turn 90 degrees right to a heading of 120 degrees. Too low. Let's try it again. Welcome to Ernest A. Love Field in Prescott, Arizona, home to the Eagle Pilot School. Our location here offers fantastic flying weather, several runways, and a control tower, all surrounded by the wild beauty of the American Southwest. This is one of our Piper PA-28 Cherokees. It's an incredibly popular general aviation aircraft that's often used for training. The instrument panel is a bit dated compared to some modern class cockpits, but personally, I like the steam gauges. Ready? Let's get going. Let's start with a simple trip around the airport traffic pattern. I'll explain more while we taxi to the runway. Prescott Ground, Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel at Eagle, ready to taxi, remaining in pattern. Cherokee 109er Sierra Hotel, Prescott Ground, altimeter 29906. Runway 3 right at Foxtrot, intersection departure. Taxi via Foxtrot. Three right at Foxtrot via Foxtrot. Cherokee Niner Sierra Hotel. Okay, it's your airplane. Taxi us along taxiway Foxtrot to the intersection with runway three right. Taxi to the runway when you're ready. Taxiway Foxtrot is straight ahead of us. Follow the yellow lines, then turn right. The traffic pattern is a rectangular pattern around a runway that allows aircraft to take off and land in an orderly manner. The pattern is especially important at airports without control towers. Flying the pattern also makes it easy to configure the airplane in the same way every time and make a stable approach to land. Go straight across here. Stop here. Prescott Tower, Cherokee 109 or Sierra Hotel is ready to go. Holding short runway three right at Foxtrot, remaining in the pattern. Cherokee 109 or Sierra Hotel, Prescott Tower. Right close traffic approved. Runway three right at Foxtrot, intersection departure, cleared for takeoff. Right close traffic approved, cleared for takeoff three right, Niner Sierra Hotel. Okay, line up and give it full power. The Cherokee rotates at 55 knots. Now 
now pitched to climb at 75 knots, which is the best climb speed in the Cherokee. There's a slight crosswind from the left today. You'll need to turn left a few degrees to correct for wind drift and maintain the runway center line. Climb straight out to 5,700 feet. That's 300 feet below the pattern altitude of 6,000 feet. Okay, here comes 5,700 feet. Now make a turn 90 degrees right to a heading of 120 degrees. Good. Keep climbing to 6,000 feet. Okay, here's 6,000 feet. Level off and hold 90 knots. Once you reach pattern altitude, pause for just a moment, then turn downwind. Go ahead and turn right 90 degrees now. Fly heading 210. Maintain 90 knots and 6,000 feet. Your goal is to fly a ground track parallel to the runway. Great job so far. Okay, downwind is a good time to do the pre-landing checks. Belts are tight, mixture is rich, fuel pump is on, landing gear is down and welded. Okay, you're a beam the touchdown zone, so start descending. Pull the throttle back and lower the nose to initiate a descent. At one notch of flaps and the aircraft will slow to around 75 knots. Aim for a 500 foot per minute descent rate. Now start looking over your shoulder at the runway. You'll turn base when we're 45 degrees off our touchdown point. Okay, here we are. Now make a right turn 90 degrees onto the base leg. Flight 300 degrees. Add one more notch of flaps and slow to 70. Now watch the runway. Try to time your turn to roll out onto the runway center line. turn shallow since we're flying slow. Done properly, you should roll out right on the center line at just the right altitude to continue a stable approach. When you think you've got the runway made, Add the last notch of flaps. You're a little low. Add a bit of power and raise the nose a touch. Slow to 65 knots on short final. Here we are. Pull the throttle control back to idle and keep the nose up until the mains touch down. You're right of the runway. Watch out, you're slow. Fly 65 knots until short final. Cherokee 9 Sierra Hotel, exit next taxiway. You're still slow. Lower the nose or add some power. Exit the runway to the right when you're in. All right, you're still too slow. We'll have to try this again.
Welcome to Kreuzwinningen Airport in Germany. This is the home of the recently formed Wings Flight Academy. Its unique hilltop location above the River Moselle makes it a beautiful place to fly. Our premium aircraft is the Diamond DA-42. The composite airframe, modern aerodynamics and efficient turbo diesel engines make it a pleasure to fly. The cabin is modern, well equipped with G1000 glass cockpit, making it a fantastic platform for both multi-engine training and later instrument flying. Diamond has also removed much of the complexity of operating a twin-engine aircraft, and you'll see what I mean once we get going. This is an easy aircraft to transition to from single-engine experience. We'll start by getting familiar with how the DA-42 flies, then we'll start your multi-engine training. This generally involves single-engine operation. Multi-engine training is all about dealing with an engine failure. Flying with two engines is easy. Flying a twin on just one engine is more complicated. Flying a twin isn't much different than flying a single-engine aircraft. It's bigger, faster, and things happen quickly. You'll have to be on your toes. Are you ready? I'll get our clearance. Koblenz Ground, Delta Golf Echo Lima Romeo from Wings Academy, ready to taxi VFR to the east. Delta Golf Echo Lima Romeo, Koblenz Ground, clear to taxi to runway 06. Clear to taxi to runway 06, Delta Golf Echo Lima Romeo. You have the flight controls. Taxi us to the runway. line to the right ahead of us. We are going to continue taxiing to the end so we can use the entire runway. Taxiing a twin is no different than a single engine airplane. Keep the speed down, it will get there. See the arrows on the runway ahead? That indicates a displaced threshold. I've seen qualified pilots forget this, so I'm reminding you ahead of time. We can take off on a displaced threshold, but we are not allowed to land on it. The displaced threshold isn't reinforced to take the repeated impact of landing aircraft like the runway is. Okay, the pre-takeoff checklist looks good. I'll call the tower. Koblenz Tower, Diamond Delta Golf Echo Lima Romeo is ready to go at runway 06. Delta Lima Romeo, cleared for takeoff. East departure approved. Cleared for takeoff, Delta Lima Romeo. Okay, go ahead and take off. This is all yours.
Takeoff is no different than any other aircraft. Line up and slowly move the throttles to full. Good. Lift the nose at 80 knots. Okay, gear up. Each climb at 19 knots. Looking good, right on speed. Very nice takeoff. You already appear comfortable in the airport. Let's continue climbing to 4,000 feet and give me a turn for 090. single you were flying before didn't climb like this. zero out the yaw motion so we're no longer pulling to the right. The first thing you want to add is enough rudder to keep us flying straight. In this case, use a lot of right rudder. The slip indicator, or ball, is at the top of the primary flight display. It's the small bar under the up arrow. Try to keep the ball just on the right side toward the good engine. Also notice the aircraft wants to roll into the dead engine so bank it's the good one to compensate. It's also very important to maintain airspeed on one engine. If you get slower than 76 knots or a minimum controllable airspeed, you cannot maintain directional control with the rudder. It is vital to keep this in mind because with one engine, you have less rudder authority. Once you've got the rudder under control, you can adjust power on the good engine. Any other twin engine aircraft would have to feather the prop on the bad engine. But the DA-42 does that automatically. Another good reason to transition into twins with this advanced aircraft. 
Last thing we do is secure that inoperative engine. I'll do that now. Engine master goes off, alternator to off, fuel selector to off. Okay, engine secured. Okay, let me see that you can fly straight and level on one engine. Slipping. Adjust rudder pressure to a sensitive slip indicator at the top of the TFD. You're right, of course. Fly zero nine zero degrees. make a turn back to the airport. It's dangerous to turn toward the dead engine, so turn away from it when at all possible. Go ahead and make a turn to 240 degrees. Turning away from the dead engine is slow. Just take it easy and make sure to keep your side slip to a minimum. so far. the aircraft our left engine is out maintain control as we make our way to the airport maintain 240 degrees you did well on the first lesson i think you can handle an engine out landing don't worry it's simple as long as we maintain airspeed start descending to 1700 feet Call the tower. Koblenz Tower, Delta Golf Echo Lima Romeo is three to the south, inbound to land, simulated engine out. Delta Golf Echo Lima Romeo, Koblenz Tower, you are cleared to land runway 06. Cleared to land runway 06, Delta Golf Echo Lima Romeo. Okay, 
The key to an engine out landing is keeping your energy or speed up. This is vital. Directional control is more difficult with your good engine at high power settings. So keeping our throttle low will ease the workload. Generally, we would lower the flaps for landing, but remember how we need to keep our energy up. So, our landing is going to be faster than you're used to. Just keep it steady. We'll also keep the gear up until we know we can make the runway. Gentle right turn toward the airport. We'll line up for runway 06. Watch your altitude. You need to maintain 1,700. Okay, make a gentle turn toward the runway. your airspeed we're slow keep it above the minimum controllable airspeed of 76 knots knots on approach. Okay, we're close enough to make the runway. Go ahead and lower the gear. From here, it's just like a normal landing. power to idle and keep it right down the center line. Hold 
hold it just off the runway as long as you can. Okay, now get on the brakes. Keep it straight. Okay, go ahead and stop here. Great job. You put it down like a pro. Very impressive. In this lesson, we're going to practice engine out procedures on takeoff. This is the situation you really do not want to be in for real, so make sure you concentrate. One day, it might save you. We'll do several takeoffs, and I'll randomly fail the engine. That way, you'll get a chance to practice the different scenarios. Here are the two scenarios, and what you need to know for each. If the engine fails before we lift off, we'll abort the takeoff. That means pull the throttles to idle, lower the nose and brake to stop before the end of the runway. If the engine fails after takeoff, we'll continue the takeoff. We are committed and must continue. Just like in level flight, we'll work to cancel out the side slip. That's a lot of rudder and some bank into the good engine. It's also very important to maintain airspeed and not get below our minimum controllable airspeed of 76 knots. This would likely require pitching down. Then we'll raise the gear and pitch to climb at our single engine best climb speed of 85 knots. Easy as that. Let's give it a shot. Oblet Tower. Delta Golf Echo Lima Romeo is ready for departure. Runway 06, simulated engine out. Delta Lima Romeo, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff. Delta Lima Romeo. You have the controls. Taxi out onto the runway, then come to a stop. Okay, stop here. It's good to do a quick briefing to make sure everyone knows what to do in case of an engine failure. Here's the briefing. If the engine fails before liftoff, we'll abort the takeoff. If the engine fails after liftoff, we'll continue the takeoff. You ready? Let's do it. Slowly push throttles to full. Remember to rotate at 80 knots. Engine failed. I have the controls. We are off the runway. Ready to try again? Slowly push throttles to full. Remember to rotate at 80 knots.
engine failed. Okay, good. Now that you know what it's like, let's see how quickly you can abort the takeoff. Let's go again. Slowly push throttles to full. Remember to rotate at 80 knots. Engine failed. Pull the power to idle and lower the nose. Alright, you're getting more comfortable with that? Next time, see how quickly you can react. Alright, let's see it again. Slowly push throttles to full. Remember to rotate at 80 knots. Zero out the side slip with rudder and bank. Uh, no, we're too slow. I have the controls. Keep climbing to 1,800 feet. Welcome back. Koblenz Tower, Delta Golf Aircon Lima Romeo is ready for departure. Runway 06, simulated engine out. Delta Lima Romeo, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff, Delta Lima Romeo. You have the controls. Taxi out onto the runway, then come to a stop. to make sure everyone knows what to do in case of an engine failure. Here's the briefing. If the engine fails before liftoff, we'll abort the takeoff. If the engine fails after liftoff, we'll continue the takeoff. You ready? Let's do it. Slowly push throttles to full. Remember to rotate at 80 knots. the nose.
Okay, good. Now that you know what it's like, let's see how quickly you can abort the takeoff. All right, let's see it again. Slowly push throttles to full. Remember to rotate at 80 knots. Engine failed. All right, you're getting more comfortable with that? Next time, see how quickly you can react. All right, let's see it again. Slowly push throttles to full. Remember to rotate at 80 knots. Okay, the airborne. Pitch to climb at 90 knots. Engine failed. Now zero out the side slip with rudder at the bank. Keep climbing to 1,800 feet. We're slipping correct with rudder and bank. Slipping. You'll need more rudder and bank during the climb. Looking good. Climbing to 1,800 feet. Doing really well. All right. We're at a safe altitude. 